This is where I grew up, God's country. Folks here call it God's country because they say he couldn't sell it and he couldn't give it away, so he had to keep it. It was a wonderful place to grow up, though. Here a man's word and his good name were his most valued possessions. People seldom locked their houses. A quick wit was a favorite means of defense, and gossip was the national sport. Nothing much out of the ordinary ever happened here until the summer of 1955. That summer, the whole town became famous. And at the heart of it all was a boy and his dog. The dog needs to be destroyed. Now, wait a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. It really started the day Dee and I opened our Spaghetti Sandwich Cafe. That's old drum, a stray we adopted a few years before. He was mostly a golden retriever, but I'd swear he was part human, too. And that's me, trying to earn enough money for a store-bought fishing rod I just had to have that summer. And here's Dorothy Ducksworth. The kids all called her D. She was partying in and lived at the edge of town. We were sort of the Butch Cassidy and Sundance kid of the prepubescent set. And there's Donnie Long, the class bully. Give me my ball back. You want? Yes. Have it. You want to? No. It's called Wayne's ball. Got so. Donnie was smaller than everybody else, but meaner. And he was from Texas. That scared us all. Hey, that's Wayne's basketball. It's mine now. Just like this lemonade. That'll be a nickel. Uh-uh. I'm on the take now, pay later plan. Now give me one of them sandwiches. It was made with you in mind. I wouldn't eat that if I were you, Donnie. Donnie probably would have killed us if he'd have caught us at that moment. But he'd have been smarter than old drum to catch us, and he wasn't. The fact is, that dog was a whole lot smarter than most people I knew in those days. <laughs> old drum had more tricks than a circus clown, and poor Donnie was no match for him. Drum sure loved playing with sheep. It was the only time I couldn't get him to mind. Having too much fun, I guess. That dog had a lot of special qualities, but one was very unusual. He had developed a different call for every animal in those parts. So you could tell what he was chasing just by the sound. Quit playing around, Drum. Come on. We have to go. Home. 240 acres. One third farm. The rest hardwood and rock. Poor land by most standards, but here, if you own it, you're proud of it. Get the 
Crumb. Go get it. Way to go, Drum. Good boy. Ready? Let's go. Come on. What'd you want with the rope, Charlie? Oh, see, we were on a commando array to liberate the rope, because we need it for a jungle expedition. You know, when I was your age, we, uh, we built a raft and uh, we pulled down the marsh end of the middle of the lake. We called it a jungle expedition. No, no, we were gonna do that. Well, that's good, because uh, Uncle Lon and Clyde Boren and me, we almost drowned that day. We were just lucky. Yeah, I know. No rats. Well, you go on now and make sure you back by three so you can get cleaned up for the Chamber of Commerce cookout, OK? You bet. <laughs> that was fun, huh, Drum? Whoa, I'm going to kick your butt. What's going on? Uh, nothing. I just forgot to put my my money in my savings jar. It's Donnie Long again, huh? He's gonna beat me up. Now, we talked about this before, son. If you stand up to bullies, you find they're not so tough as you think they are. Who well, Donnie Long is? When I'm in this situation, I always ask myself, what's the worst that can happen? Making them into your friend, that's gonna be the hard part. This was my favorite view in the whole world, Dad's farm. Mom used to bring me here, and that's what I remember best about her. That and how she trained Drum as a pup to watch after me. And after she died, Drum took over her job. some money off a contest to catch Big Bozo, the legendary locker bass in Miller's Lake. I was going to build a floating fishing dock. sometimes appeared out of thin air, and always with her dog, Missy. It's a secret. It doesn't look like a secret to me. It looks remarkably like a raft. What are you doing with your dad's fishing rod, anyway? I can't take a shot big bows of the fish. I thought that's why you wanted to come down here. Because of the contest? You mean the contest caught a sporting goods is offering? The $50 prize to catch him? Hey! You two there, what you doing? Ah, uh, Uncle Lon. Not exactly a hell fellow well met. Always frowning, always serious, 
And always trouble for kids. You're building a raft. I know, sir. It's a business that I think we can make a lot of money from. You know, ever since my sister, your mother passed on, you and that dog of yours have been running wild. You ought to be home helping your paw. Why are you carrying your rifle? Something killed one of my sheep last night. Probably a wild dog. I intend to shoot it if I see it. Of course, it could have been that mud of yours. I seen him chasing my sheep today. Maybe I ought to shoot him now. Now, just wait a second, Uncle Om. Drum would never chase sheep. You was with him on your bike. I saw you. I'm wasting my time with you two. You know, if you was my kids, I'd tan your butts for loafing. Put you to work. Wasn't old Drum wild when your dad found him? No, he was abandoned, but not wild. My mom trained him. I wonder if we could tame a wild dog. It'd be a shame if Uncle Long just killed it. He doesn't like animals, does he? He says animals were put on this earth for people to use. And good animals are useful, and bad animals aren't. I don't believe that. Neither do I. See, I think all animals are good. It's the people who are the problem. Whoa, I, I got him! Huge! Help me, dear! Hang on, Charlie! How oh, busy it is! Just about everyone in town showed up later that day for the Chamber of Commerce cookout. Honey, sis, Bill. Really, Dad? It had to be Big Bozo. He almost pulled us both into Minnow's Lake. Well, the big ones always get away, son. It's how come they get to be so big. And, uh... My father was almost never at a loss for words. And, uh... With one exception. She was the exception. Ann Hudson. She ran the local newspaper, and there was no doubt there was a chemistry between them. Even at that age, I could tell. Afternoon, Charles. Charlie? Good afternoon, Ann. You, uh, you look mighty pretty today. Here was a man who wasn't afraid of anything, but all she had to do was smile, and his knees turned to butter. Care to check out the chili eating contest? Well, it'd be a pleasure. Wayne Snelling had been one of my best friends for as long as I could remember. When he wasn't shooting hoops, you could generally find him working on his curveball. Saw a dining along over there. Andy's got a broken nose. Says ran into a door. Are you nuts? Come on. Dip right Donnie. up. Three balls for a dollar. Mm. Sorry to hear that nose. Here? Yeah. Wayne said you ran into a door. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I did. You want to join us? Doing what? Just checking things out. Hey, guys, guess what? I'm on the coffee. After sundown at these cookouts, folks would play cards, swap tales, and stretch the truth. And that's where you'd always find the town mayor, George Myers, a politician to the bone. And there's Lyle Snelling, Wayne's dad. He raised sheep on a farm next to Uncle Lon. Yeah. Speaking of dogs, has anyone had any problem with a pack of wild dogs? The Urban's lost a lamb to them. Yeah, I heard Is that. Is that right? And Stanley Breivogel said a bunch of dogs tried to get in his chicken coop a couple nights back. Uh, he ran them off before they could do any damage. Oh. There's Lon Hornsby. He called me this morning, he lost one too. The Urban's lost a lamb to them wild dogs. Huh? Didn't see any of them. Of course, it could have been a local dog gone bad. Tore up my sheep pretty good. Losing two or three sheep can mean the difference between turning a profit or not. Or something's got to be done. Well, we could all get together Saturday and hunt that pack down. Wayne and I couldn't believe it. Wild dogs. And a whole pack of them. Maybe if we played our cards right, we could go along. No! Oh, man, I'm gonna get you! Come here! I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you! No! You're not gonna get me! Whoa! Hey, careful now. Charlie! Hey, you know what? I ran into your Uncle Lon, and uh, he said he saw you down at Miller's Lake and it looked like you were building a raft. Uh-oh. I didn't want to lie, but I couldn't exactly tell the truth either. It, well, I, it was. I, I, I Actually, could. Mr. Burden, Charlie and I was down there fishing for Big Bozo. We decided to start a business together. 
That's what we were building. Is that right? What kind of business? Well, we don't know yet, but we're gonna get together tomorrow and figure it out, right? Partner. Oh, right. Partner. Let's go. See ya. Ah, uh, my son, the businessman. Behold, no fishing dog. Still looks like rafts to me. I plan to rent it out to the other kids for two cents a minute so they can fish out farther in the lake and have a better chance of catching Big Bozo. How are we gonna know it works? We test it. Here, you push with the pole. Go! <laughs> yeah! Uh -huh. I was one lucky kid, and I owed that dog my life. I knew it then as much as I do now. Thanks, Drum. I would have missed out on a lot of good years if it hadn't been for old Drum that day. Good boy. Pulled him out of the water. I couldn't believe it. I thought he was gonna die. Oh, Dee couldn't wait to tell Wayne and everybody else about Drum's heroics. Of course, when something like that happens in a small town, the story spreads like a summer grass fire. I couldn't believe it. I mean, he's a dog. I mean, how could he pull him out of the water? But he did. I was so happy. The story got home before we did. And the minute I saw Dad, there was no doubt. I was in trouble. Charlie, sit down. You lied to me, son. But it wasn't a raft. It was a floating fishing doll. You can't change what something is by giving it a different name. Nobody likes a liar, son. You understand me? Yes, sir. So what do you think your punishment ought to be? I don't know. I hated naming my own punishment because if I went too light, I'd have to add to it. Well, I suppose that I should have my chores done for a couple of weeks. That's a start. Not enough. This called for a big one. I suppose I shouldn't be allowed to go to Miller's Lake for a while. For how long a while? The rest of the summer? Well, there it was. Summer was officially ruined. If anyone was gonna catch Big Bozo and collect that $50 prize, it wasn't gonna be me. But at least I hadn't punished myself out of next Saturday's wild dog hunt. Follow me! The strategy was the same as they used on rabbit hunts. A group of us would drive the wild dogs through Malcolm's woods toward the sheep men who would be waiting at the far end. Once there, the wild dogs would be trapped. All right, keep pace, men. Spread out over there. Dog 
The drum knew the wild dogs had gone upstream, and he was trying to get us to follow him. Everybody else is going in the wrong direction. We have to get them all back here. No, we'll never be able to turn that stampede around in time. Well, let's you and me go get them. I don't think so, son. We don't want Drum going up against a pack of killers by himself. He wouldn't stand a chance. Let's just go on, son. Come on, Drum. Get ready, gents. Keep your eyes and ears open for everything. Here they come. Steady. Can you see them? Not yet. Stop! Those are our dogs. Away. Still running. I don't think we'll have to worry about any wild dogs. Yeah, they were just plum lucky they gave us a slip. They wouldn't have given us a slip if we'd have followed old Drum instead of all those other great hunting dogs. Hey, Charlie? Come on. Uh -huh. Yeah. At a time like this, there's no need to point out that old Drum was right and the others were wrong. They know it. But what am I supposed to do after they made fun of old Drum? Well, you just walk around with a smile on your face, petting your dog. They'll get the message. So while I make lunch, run over to the Snellings and ask Lila if I can borrow that big vice grip of his. Come on, Drum. Drum gave a call I'd never heard before. fought those wild dogs with everything he had. But things were looking pretty bad. I don't know how he did it, but somehow Drum was able to take those killer dogs down. He saved my life again. But this time he paid a price. Charlie! Oh, you're Charlie. dead. Charlie, you all right? Yeah, it's Drum though, Dad. Oh my He's God. He's hurt bad. Charlie, these, these, these bites need to be looked at, Charlie. But, but what about Drum? He's hurt too. It doesn't look good, but we'll have Doc Thompson look at him when we get back. Now, can you walk? Yeah, can you take Drum off? All right, Charlie. Here we go. It's okay, Drum. Come on, Ooh. son. Okay, Drum. Come on. Doc Thompson was the only doctor in town. Since the old vet had died a year ago, he looked after the animals too. 
There is a possibility of infection, but the biggest danger is shock. He could go pretty fast in that case. How will we know if that's happening? He'll start shivering, and then his skin will feel cold. You'll have to keep him warm. How long do we got to keep an eye on him, Doc? Through the night. The danger of shock will pass by morning. Then we'll just have to see about his will to live. How many wild dogs were there? Uh, three. I think there were four, Dad. I'm going to have to take their heads into the lab and section them, see if they had rabies. And if they're rabid? We've got a cure. A series of shots. But believe me, it's no fun. Come on, Charles. Time's critical. Ann had come out with the doc, and I was mighty glad she did. You don't think Drum will die, do you? Charlie, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's possible. He's hurt pretty bad. What'll I do? I can't watch him die. I just can't. You have to be brave, like Drum was for you. If Drum dies, it's because he gave his life to save yours. That's the noblest thing a dog can do for his master. And the only way you can thank him is by showing him the dignity he deserves, by being brave, by being here for him now. I'm gonna go in the house and wait for your dad and Doc Thompson so you can be alone here with old drum. You need anything, you just call. I'll come running. night of my life, I cuddled up to him, trying to keep him warm, trying to keep him alive. When old drum gave me his patented wake-up kiss, I knew the danger of him going into shock had passed. Ann put out a one-sheet extra telling about how old Drum had saved my life and killed a pack of wild dogs. Seemed like half the county came by that Sunday, checking to see how Drum was doing and paying their respects to him. Word had spread the key to him getting better was making sure he ate, so most brought table scraps. And with all that food, he was doing just fine. Dad said he'd never go back to regular dog food. Were you scared? Maybe a little bit. Tell him how it happened. Right. So these dogs start sneaking up on us, right? And I throw rocks at them. And then they come after old drum. Can you stay for dinner? That simple question really caught Ann off guard. It was the first time Dad had asked her to do anything with him. The real shocker was when Uncle Lon and Aunt Katie arrived. But I figured Aunt Katie made him come. Charles, how you doing? We brought you some scraps. Oh, well, thank you. We were just, uh, Getting ready to fix some dinner. Uh, would you like to stay and help us celebrate Old Drum's improvement? No, I don't think so. I don't. Well, who ever heard of celebrating a mangy mutt's health? We'd love to. Well, all right. Now we're really talking first. Please. Uncle Lon and Aunt Katie had never had a meal at our house, and I'd sure never eaten at theirs. You read the stories Ann wrote about the town council? Only woman know about politics anyway. <laughs> oh boy, 
And by criticizing Anne, Uncle Lon was spoiling for trouble. In my school, we're not supposed to talk politics or religion. <laughs> well, now that's a real bright boy you're raising, Charles. Just think how smart he'd be if my sister had been around to educate him. Well, speaking of raising, I think you'd be doing a much more responsible job of it, Charles. Well, now, if you get some gas in your pipe salon, it's best to just let it on out. You let him run all over the place when he should be home, doing chores. And as it is, he's off lollygagging around with that little half-breed girl. You know, things sure would be different if my sister were alive. If his mother were alive, everything would be exactly the same. He'd be a child when he's supposed to be a child. He's grown up to be a heathen. Well, that's better than growing up thinking you can walk on water. If my sister had lived, things would be different. Lon, sit down, honey. Charles. Come on, it's time for us to go. Well, well, honey, I'm not, I'm not done yet. Lon. Charles. Eat your vegetables, Charlie. What happened between Uncle Lon and Dad at dinner today? Oh, they've always been like oil and water. Lon's so serious, your dad's always joking. Once, when they were your age, your dad tricked Lon into falling into a swamp with his Sunday suit on by making him believe he could walk on water. <laughs> I knew about that. But there's something more. Lon blames your mom's death on your dad. Why? She died of a burst appendix. How can he blame that on dad? He says he should have recognized what was ailing her sooner and should have gotten her to the hospital quicker. None of that is true. Lon's just the type of person that's got to fix the blame on somebody. I don't know why. I was amazed at how fast Drum healed. In about a month, he was back to normal. Except every once in a while, he'd wander off on his own. Something he'd never done before. D and I were back to figuring out how to make some money. That's it. Frogs. We could sell them to the Legion. Of course. Yeah. Was that a wild dog? I don't know. I gotta go. You check with Clyde Bowen about the frogs. Right. I'll tell him tomorrow when we go into town. Okay. See you later. A dead sheep, only a few yards from where I found Drum, and right on Uncle Lon's property. I knew Drum didn't do it, but that sheep couldn't have been dead for more than an hour. I made sure nobody saw us, and then I took off. So what I'm saying is it must have been a dog what did it. At the first sight of Uncle Lon, I knew there was trouble. He obviously wasn't making a social call. Charlie! Come here! Uncle Lon's had another sheep killed. Says he found it right after he saw old drum cutting through his pasture around noon. Critter wasn't quite dead yet. Throat ripped like a dog does. Drum was there about the time it happened. It wasn't Drum. He was with me the whole time. Boy, now I'm not calling you a liar, but Drum was there about the time it happened. Who else could it be? Old Drum's never killed any sheep before. Why would he now? I'm afraid he's got himself a taste for killing. 
because of the fight. Hey, Dean, I saw a wild dog. I'll bet that's what killed your sheep. What do he look like, Charlie? I didn't get a good look, but it had to have been that wild dog. Because it wasn't Drum, he was with me. Something's got to be done. I can't afford to lose any more sheep. I can't believe he'd accuse old Drum. Uncle Lon's getting nuttier than a fruitcake. <laughs> right, Dad? Come on, boy. I'm afraid this ain't a laughing matter, son. If Drum killed another farm animal, he'd have to be destroyed. Just isn't right. Son. A man's family has got to come before his dog. I decided a good offense was the best defense, so I spread the story of how Uncle Lon accused Drum of killing his sheep, only I joked about it to make Uncle Lon look silly. And it worked. Soon it was all over town, and people were telling jokes on Uncle Lon and teasing him. Like Clyde Borden, who ran the Legion Club and was the town clown. See you later, CB. Looking forward to it. Hey, sorry about all the teasing you're taking, Lon. I know it's no laughing matter. It certainly isn't. Bunch of idiots. Oh. Well, it makes you want to take a poke at somebody. Now, now, I think you're showing remarkable restraint. I'm very proud of you. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? He barked at me. Oh, now. See, he's just trying to be friends. Oh, look. Go on, shake. Go on, shake. Shake with him. Ah, uh, pshaw. What is this? What is this, some kind of trick? No, no, not at all. I just thought it showed a nice sense of humor on your part. Come on. I didn't mean to make him mad. I just thought it looked like such a cute picture. Oh, don't worry about Lon. He's just tough to figure out. Hey, uh, you wouldn't want to meet us over at the Legion Club for the shrimp boil, say, around noon now, would you? I'd love to. Well, all righty then. Can I have them by Saturday? Oh, sure. Thursday or Friday, your choice. Thursday. Hey! We're going frog hunt Thursday. You wanna come? Who's we? Dean Wayne and me. Yeah, what's the point? We sell the frogs to the Legion Club for their Saturday frog leg special. Yeah? How much did I make? Depends on how many we catch. Or probably a couple of bucks. Why cut me in? We need the help. Besides, it'll be fun. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> he doesn't have many friends, does he? None. Seen the paper? Nah, we don't subscribe to it. <laughs> On the inside there. <laughs> ah. Dang, they're making me out to be a fool. No, not if you read it. But they make you out to be good humored about all the ribbon you've been taking. I thought maybe you and Katie would like to have my copy for your family scrapbook. I lost a sheep last night. Well, now what happened? Something tore his throat out. Didn't try to eat it, just killed it. Where'd you find it? My boy Wayne found it about 50 yards from the fence by Burden's Land. It's that dang dog of his. I just knew it. What you gonna do about it? I'm on my way to see the sheriff now. Sorry, Lyle. We 
you got some trouble here. Sometimes the person closest to the trouble is the last to learn about it. It took until Thursday for me to find out. And by then, all kinds of wheels were turning and forces were in motion. Morning, cheap boy. Ready for the big frog hunt? I can't play today. Are you sick? No, oh, I just can't. Dee filled me in on what was really going on. The reason Wayne couldn't go on the frog hunt was because his dad blamed old Drum for killing his sheep. Uh-oh. Nine button. What? You're asking for trouble. So, uh, how do we go about this? Drum and I'll heard while you two crowd. Absolutely not. I'm not catching any frogs. Yuck. What are you, chicken? Call me when you want. I either heard or I'm headed home. Okay, okay. <laughs> this looks like a major home. Work is around 250. There you go, Al. Sure. All right, now, I will pay you the balance after I get them counted per usual. Charlie, did you hear your uncle lost another sheep? Yeah, it's too bad. But Drum didn't have anything to do with it. Well, Lon put out the word he's going to shoot any dog he sees on his land, so I wouldn't be cutting across his place with your dog. That's crazy. Well, some people are starting to act crazy. You know, you might keep old Drum locked up at night. Well, that way he'll have an alibi in case anything else was to happen. Thanks, Mr. Bourne. All right. You give Wayne his shit. Whoa! Whoa, whoa! I didn't see Wayne here. Where well, I figured we'd get to eight. That's not the way we do it. If it's not your fault you weren't here, like if your parents kept you home like Wayne said, you still get your share. That's how we always do it. Well, I see he gets his share. Any objections? <laughs> I'll get even for this. You cheated me! You know, there ain't much else you can do if it's a sheep killer. Well, we don't know that for sure. Yeah, but who can afford to take the chance? I say kill him. Well, maybe you're right. It's only a dog. Yeah, there's nothing else to do. You gotta kill him. Hand me that wrench. Charles? Sheriff. Charlie? What brings you out this way? Well, nothing good, I'm afraid. Lon lost another sheep. Yeah, I heard. He claims he saw old Drum out where he found a sheep, and he filed a complaint. He wants him destroyed. You can't do that. You didn't do anything. Please, Dad, don't let him kill old Drum. Easy, Charlie. I'm not going to destroy him. I'm just going to impound him for a bit. That way, if the killing continues, everybody will know that it's not old drum. Can't we just keep him locked up out here? I'm sorry, Charles, but I think we have to go with the letter of the law. But what happens if you lock up old drum and no more sheep are killed? Dad said that there are only three dead wild dogs, and I'm sure that I saw four. Maybe one crawled off, or maybe... You know, you're making it awful difficult for me, Sheriff. I mean, just because Lon 
thinks he saw a drum in the area. Well, that ain't proof. Why don't you just let us lock him up here? It'll be easier on the boy, easier on the dog. Letter of the law, Charles. <laughs> All right, let's see it. See what? The warrant. Well, I didn't think I was gonna need one. Letter of the law, Sheriff. All right. You both know you're gonna see me again tomorrow. That's all right. At least Charlie will have another night with drum. Drum, you got big problems. I know you didn't kill those sheep, but nobody's listening to me. They wanna take you away from me. But I'm not gonna let that happen. We're gonna stick together. No matter what, Trump. Just you and me forever. We needed a place to hide. I figured the abandoned cabin on Miller's Lake was as good a place as any. Trust me, and I want you to trust me too, Charlie. I guess I do. Guess? Guess not good enough. We're talking about Drum's life here. I know all that. But I didn't know what to do. If we went back, then that locked Drum up again. Yes, they will, Charlie. But that's not the end of the line. We will fight it. You just have to have faith in the truth, Charlie. That's why I run the newspaper. People need to know the truth. It's my job to point it out. I know we didn't do it. <laughs> but what if he wasn't with me the whole time? Then it wouldn't be right to say he was. You just have to be honest and have faith in the truth. I didn't know it at the time, but for that brief moment, once again, I had a mom. Had me worried sick. I'm real sorry, Dad. All right, now you go call the sheriff and apologize to him. Tell him we'll bring Drum in in the morning, and then you gotta call and apologize to the Bryfogles, the McBrides, and the Duckworths. They spent the morning searching for you. <laughs> go on! Yes, sir. I was so afraid something was gonna happen to him. I feel so helpless. He's a good kid. And you're a good dad. Regardless of what Lon might say. Can you stay for dinner? Better than that, I'll cook. Whoa. <laughs> Come here, Drum. Come here. You're on good, old timer. I don't want you getting in any more trouble. Stay. I'll, uh, I'll walk you to your car, Ann. Hey, I was planning on finishing the dishes. Oh. Uh, 
Charlie can do. Okay. The way he was standing, I couldn't tell if he was talking or trying to think of what to say. I was too embarrassed to look, but I did wonder how he would go about telling me. After a raccoon again, Dad. Well, that ain't possible. Drop! Drop! We're not gonna find him, Charlie. It's getting too dark. We gotta go back. But if he's hurt, we just can't leave. Well, we're not gonna find him, Charlie. Besides, if he's hurt, he's gonna head for home. Best if we're back there ready to help. Yeah, yeah, on, I knew Dad was right. There was a better chance of him finding us than us finding him. Run! When we got back, old Drum wasn't there. And Dad said we'd go out looking again as soon as it got light. I kept thinking there had to be something we could do, but there wasn't. So I cried myself to sleep that night. Run! We searched all morning. The open fields were easy to cover. The weed and forest areas took the most time. We crisscrossed them and crisscrossed them again. Not a sign of him anywhere. But I couldn't quit on old Drum. He'd never quit on me. So I went over to Uncle Lon's place where we'd started. Just thought I'd double check. Still nothing. On the way to get Dee and Missy for some help, I saw the blood. size was able to carry him that far. But I loved that dog and there was no way I was going to leave him to die. Charlie. Clear over Haymaker's Mill Creek. Strange you run away from my house instead of going to it. You know, that's exactly what I was thinking. How'd you find it? Well, I was going to get Dee to help me hunt for him. And as I was walking through the cattails, I found blood. And I just followed the trail to him. I just heard about Drum. Yeah, 
How is he? Not good. Dad doesn't think he'll make it. Doc. It's a shame you couldn't have got him in here last night. He's lost a lot of blood. He's got a raging fever. It doesn't look good. And the bullet? I got it out okay. Broke a couple of ribs. Slug flattened out something fierce. If it hadn't, it probably killed him instantly. Uh, can we, uh, can we see him? Sure. Hey, Charlie. Hey, John. Hey, boy. You notice these sorrel hairs, Doc? Hmm. Who's the only one we know around here with a sorrel mule, huh? Drone. You don't know that. I do. Now, you're welcome to come along if you like. Charles, don't go. You will just get something started. It's already started. Charles, don't be like this. Brings you here. I came so you could apologize to my boy for shooting his dog. I didn't shoot his dog. You shot Drum. You put him on that sorrel mule of yours, and you hauled him down to Mill Creek, where you thought he'd never be found. Well, even if I had, and I didn't, I wouldn't apologize for killing a sheep killer. Well, he ain't dead yet. Yeah, I know. He sure looked dead when you dumped him, didn't he? The next morning, I couldn't wait to see how Drum was doing, so Dad drove me into town. How's Drum, Doc? He's doing better. Lon was here earlier, checking on old Drum. Once he found out he was feeling better, he went over there to get the sheriff to serve the warrant. Hey, what are you with my dog? I have to take him into custody until after the trial. Might as well know the truth. Lon wants him destroyed, and he's on his way right now to hire Thomas Crittenden, who is a very high-powered attorney. There you go, in, boy. Hop in there. I suggest you all get a lawyer yourselves. Do you really have to take old girl to jail? Charlie, I got no choice. My hands are tied. You can come feed him at the jail once a day. That's the best I can do. We went for a big time lawyer, too. And everybody in town knew there was a knockdown drag out in the making. We went to Davenport to meet with George Graham Best. He had a reputation as a spellbinding orator. I, uh,. I think it's only fair to tell you that my brother-in-law is hiring Thomas Crittenden. Crittenden, huh? Well, sounds to me like you folks are facing a loaded deck. There really isn't much I can do for you. This isn't my kind of case. But uh, I want to uh, wish you the best of luck. Come on, Charlie. I had a feeling we were a little bit out of our league here. Please, Mr. Vest, you gotta help us. We don't have any place else to turn. I know that we may look poor, but I brought every penny that I got to pay you. $12.83. Nearly enough for a good fishing rod. You can't let them destroy old drum, Mr. Vest. I got him as a pup. And we grew up together. I don't have a mother or a brother or a sister like all the other kids. But I do have a drum. The drum's got me. 
He saved my life twice. Now, well, it's my turn. He's the best dog that, that there ever was. And I just can't let him down. I gotta save him. Please, Mr. Vest, help me, please. Son, it sounds to me like old Drum deserves his day in court. We were excited. We were hoping Mr. Vest could save old Drum and that Uncle Lon would get what he had coming. Dad, what's punitive damages that Mr. Vest wants Uncle Lon to pay? It's uh, penalty money that you have to pay when you've done something very wrong. Here you're looking for a lawyer. Not anymore. I got George Graham Vest. We are gonna nail Lon to the barn wall. Punitive damages, penalty money. Do you think that's wise? Lon is, after all, your brother-in-law. Well, that's true, Ann, but he is also the man that tried to kill my son's dog. You don't have to sue him. Oh, yes, I do. Because now, Lon is trying to have Drum destroyed. Just save Drum. Don't go for the revenge. It isn't revenge, Ann. It's retribution. You, know, you and Lon are splitting this town down the middle. Lifelong friends aren't even speaking to each other. Well, I can't help that. I'm just trying to save my son's dog. Save Drum. Yes, for God's sakes. Just let it go with that. No, it's too late. then it's too late for us. Are you trying to tell me that if I don't drop this suit, that it's over between us? If you don't, you are not the man I thought you were. I guess this means I won't find out what it's like to have a mother, huh? Drum just didn't understand why he had to be locked up. I stopped by every day to visit him, and he looked so depressed in that jail I nearly died. If I could have slipped a file into his dog food, I would have done it. wrote a story about how Uncle Lon hired Crittenden to get Drum destroyed, and how Dad hired George Graham Vest to save Drum, and how other newspapers in the area were picking up on the story. Dad was impressed with her fairness. But on the editorial page, she told it like she saw it, called Dad and Uncle Lon mule brain jerks, and then she got tough on them. I think my visits were helping, cause slowly, day by day, Drum was getting better. Just hang in there, Drum. Mr. Vess will figure something out. You'll see. Okay, Charlie, it's time to go. Leaving was the hard part. He'd howl like I was deserting him, and that just broke my heart. Two weeks later, we went to trial, and the story made the wire services. The whole country was watching. Dad? Dad, I was thinking. We may lose old Drum today. It could happen. But we don't have to lose Ann, too. The courtroom made it all seem so final. 
I'd rather have faced that pack of wild dogs again than that grim-faced judge. Mr. Vest led with our best card first. Bring in the defendant. Objection! You can't bring a dog in hell. Your Honor, the criminal code states that the defendant shall be present at his trial. But that's not a person. That's a dog. No, it doesn't specify. It just says defendant. Mr. Best, I shouldn't have to remind you that the criminal code has nothing to do with this. This is a civil matter. And Mr. Burton is your client, not the dog. <laughs> However, since the dog's life is at stake, I will permit him to remain in the room. <laughs> but you get that dog out of that chair and tie him to the bar. And Mr. Vest, one more attempt at showboating and I will find you in contempt. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. My client would like to amend his countersuit. Oh, objection. Sustained. Well, I'm sure Mr. Crittenden won't object to Mr. Burden dropping his request for punitive damages. Uh, no, that, that's good. What is the reasoning behind this? My client feels we are getting away from our true purpose. Exacting a pound of flesh from Mr. Hornsby is not our goal. Saving the life of old Drum here is. That would be a big enough victory for us. Motion granted. We intend to prove that old Drum is a valuable producing member of this family. That his hunting abilities are unique. That he has been specially trained to leave sheep alone. That there is no need to destroy this dog. And that Lon Hornsby tried to cover up shooting Drum. Now, if Lon Hornsby had pulled the trigger on the gun that shot old Drum while he was trespassing on his land, he would have had the right to. But he didn't. He is completely innocent of that accusation. In fact, that's not even the question before us. The question is, does that man have the right to live free of the fear that his neighbor's dog is killing his sheep? As an expert, do you believe old Drum is capable of killing those sheep? I've known that dog ever since they found him as a pup, and he has never exhibited the type of behavior that... Objection! He's no expert. I can prove that in two questions. Have you ever studied veterinary medicine? No. Have you ever studied animal behavior? No. Well... Sustained. Call Donnie Long. What was Donnie Long doing here? I hoped he wasn't going to use this time to get even. Stand up, right hand, son. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Donnie, why don't you tell the judge and the jury what you told me about old Drum? Uh, he doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You tell him what he did to you outside the Legion Hall. Uh, he growled at me. <laughs> did you not tell me that he attacked you? Yes. Then tell the judge and the jury. But it wasn't under oath then. Are you saying that that was a lie? Yes. I was trying to get back at Charlotte Burton. But I was wrong. Your Honor, I'm, I'm sorry for wasting the court's time. I, I had no idea. But we have many more witnesses who are ready to prove our point. Thank you so much, Donnie. Have you ever seen the dog in question on your property? Yes, there are two particular times come to mind. Why these two? Because both times I found freshly killed sheep right after I saw them. Freshly killed? How fresh? Well, actually, one of them was still barely alive, but there was no other animal in sight. No other animals around. Hmm. Your witness.
Couldn't that sheep have been laying there uh, for an hour before you found it? No, I don't think so. You ever see old drum kill a sheep? No, but what else was that animal doing on my property? Alone? Uh, no further questions. Your Honor, I'd like to call D. Duxworth. I had no idea what was going on. Why would Mr. Vest call D? Now, Miss Duxworth, do you know why old Drum was cutting across Lon Hornsby's property? Yes. <laughs> Objection. I'm a how could a little girl know what's on a dog's mind? Sometimes it's pretty easy, mister. I could show you. See, mister, you could tell what animal has on his mind. It wasn't sheep he was after. Honest. Objection. Once again, Mr. Vest is grandstanding. Now, the fact that old drum may or may not be the father of those pups had nothing to do with killing sheep. Objection sustained. I warned you once about grandstanding, Mr. Vest. Your Honor, I meant nothing by it. Your witness. So, uh, how many times did uh, Drum visit Missy? And did he visit alone? About two to three times, and yes, he was alone. How'd he get there? Through Mr. Hornsby's field, I guess. Hmm. So going and coming, uh, Drum must have gone through Mr. Hornsby's field between four and six times alone. Hmm. He had access to the site between four and six times alone. Dismissed. Sorry, Charlie. I was just trying to help. When people in this community had sheep killed, did they report that to you? Uh, yeah, me and Sheriff McGuire. Now, you two share that information? That's right. Now, since old Drum killed those pack of wild dogs, how many sheep have been lost? Uh, three. Lon Hornsby lost two, and uh, Lyle Snelling lost one. Hmm. And uh, since old Drum has been in jail, how many sheep have been lost? None. Your witness. Mayor Myers, can you think of any reason why someone who had lost a sheep wouldn't report it to you? None. Uh, this is the type of situation where the community pulls together and shares information. No further questions. I'd like to call Wayne Snelling. Wayne, you heard Mayor Myers say that no one has reported any sheep being killed since old Drum was locked up. Yes. Do you believe that to be true? No, sir, I know it isn't. I don't mean the mayor lied, but I saw the dead sheep. So I guess it wasn't reported. How do you know about the sheep? Well, I was cutting through Mr. Hornsby's field, and I saw him burying the sheep. Its throat had been ripped out. He said that if I told anyone that he'd see to it, that my dad gave me a whooping I'd never forget. Objection! Yes, say, he's just repeating something someone else may or may not have said. He's telling about what he experienced. That is not hearsay. Objection overruled. Go on, Mr. Vest. Since old Drum was locked up at the time, what does this mean to you? That he probably didn't kill the other sheep either. Uh -huh. yeah. That's what I Objection! Just the fact that a sheep has been killed has nothing to do with this case. It doesn't prove that that dog didn't kill those other sheep. Sustained. No further questions. Thank you, son. <clears throat> I'd like to call Charlie Burden. I did not want to go up there. In fact, if I could have been anywhere else in the world at that moment, it would have been fine with me.
right hand, sir. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Now, Charlie, the day your Uncle Lon came over to tell your dad that a sheep had been killed and that he'd seen Drum in that same field, didn't you tell him that it couldn't have been Drum because he was with you all day? Yes. Didn't you tell that same story to the sheriff? Yes. Didn't you tell that same story to a lot of people and uh, make fun of your uncle while you're doing it? Uh, yes. Was that the truth, Charlie? Well, I... Remember, you were under oath. Well, he... Just like Donnie Long was under oath. Were you with Drum all day long? No. No more questions. While Mr. Vest convinced some of the jury that Drum hadn't been the one killing sheep, Mr. Crittenden was doing an even better job convincing them they had no choice but to destroy old Drum. And a dog's rights were in no way comparable to a man's rights to earn a living and to feed his family. Now, this dog has been heroic in the past. I do not dispute that. But he's become a killer, sheep killer. We've all seen it before. Once a dog gets a taste for blood, you know, you only have one choice. And if you don't want your neighbor to face financial ruin, you only have one choice. And if y'all don't want to look foolish to the rest of the country for granting a, a dog greater rights than a man, you only have one choice. It's a sad choice. It's a difficult choice. But you all know, it's a necessary choice. The dog must be destroyed. Crittenden was pretty impressive. I think he swung some boats away from us. I just don't know how many. Is that why you want to take this break? Yeah. It's an old trick of mine. When we reconvene, you watch the jury and see how many of them look you straight in the eye. Those are the ones who'll be voting for you. If they don't look you straight in the eye, then they're voting against you. Mm -hmm. We got the vote. I'll read this uh, short summation, and we'll go home victorious. And if we don't? I had a sinking feeling when only two jurors would look at Dad. Mr. Vest was studying the jury, and I knew he was thinking fast, but I had no idea how fast. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the best friend a man has in this world may turn against him and become his worst enemy. His son or his daughter, who he has raised with love and care, may prove ungrateful. Those who we trust with our happiness, our good name, may become traitors to us. People who are prone to fall on their knees to do us honor when success is with us are often the first to throw the stones of malice when failure settles its cloud on our heads. But the one absolutely unselfish friend that you can have in this selfish world, the one who will never desert you, the one who never proves ungrateful or treacherous, is your dog. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, 
He is your best friend in prosperity and in poverty, in health and in sickness. He will sleep on the cold ground where wintry winds blow and snows drive fiercely, if only to be at his master's side. He kisses the hand that offers him no food. He licks the wounds and sores that come in encounters with the roughness of the world. He guards the sleep of his pauper master as if he were a prince. And when all other friends depart, he remains. If fortune sends his master forth, an outcast in the world, friendless and homeless, the faithful dog asks no higher privilege than that of accompanying him to guard against danger, to fight against his enemies. And when the last scene of all comes, and death takes his master in its embrace, and his body is laid away in the cold ground, no matter if all other friends pursue their way, there by his graveside will the noble dog be found, his head between his paws, his eyes sad, but open in alert watchfulness, faithful and true, even to death. We'll be lucky if they don't land, Chas. We find Old Drum not guilty. <laughs> A week later, Lyle Snelling shot a wild dog attacking his sheep, and the killing ended. It's okay, you're on. Uncle Lon was, well, Uncle Lon. But Aunt Katie worked her magic on him, and in a week or two, things were back to normal. George Graham Best was elected to the U.S. Senate the next year. Oh, yeah, I finally got to find out what it's like to have a new mother, and it's great. And drum. Well, old Drum and I had a lot more adventures together. But that's another story. Way to go, old Drum. Way to go. Mr. Vest's speech became famous. And children from all over the world sent pennies and nickels, and they created a statue of old Drum. It sits right here in front of the Warrensburg Courthouse with that speech in bronze. Folks said it was a worldwide tribute to friendship. As for me, it's a tribute to the best friend I ever had. Mm -hmm.